I watch her sleep, my second ray of light, though my first one is a little faded at the moment. This new one keeps my monster at bay and makes me feel that I'm alive. Otherwise my life is just colorless. She colored my life and then I lost her. Not just her, but me as well. I'm trying to find myself. But till now, I have failed. Though sometimes I think that who I'm trying to find, me? That I willingly handed over to her. I don't have an inch of regret for that though. What I did, I deserve the worst. I'm the king of the underworld. I have power, I have money. People fear me, but still... No more, I'm no more than a beggar without her by my side. She gave me a princess whom she grew in her all alone. When she needed me the most, I was lost in another dungeon of sin. Sinning and sinning, and I continued sinning until I lost my God, my wine. I dared to commit the blasphemous deed of offending her. No, breaking her. What kind of worshipper it make me? The worse, worse than Lucifer, or maybe the same. He offended God due to his pride, and I offended my God due to my pride. Every day since that day in hospital, I watch and burn, I hear and burn, I observe and burn. My punishment is to wander around like a lost soul and don't find peace. I have developed insomnia. A night I'm in my office or in my princess's room. In a day, it's just another day. It will pass. My life revolved around her and then I ruined everything. My doing. To find help? Outside. Rather than talk to her. To seek help. And people took advantage of that and drugged me. It was all done by Cage Wayne. The hire of the Northern Italian Mafia. I declined his few shipments and took over his clients. That's why he played this nasty card. Though I have been taking revenge by cutting off their money, they are regretting their vile deeds, calling for truth, but I have been postponing it. Let them burn while I burn. I am wallowing in self-pity these days, on the verge of losing my... But then I see her, playing with our daughter, smiling and giggling under our roof such a gorgeous and strong woman she had developed into i was so scared when she said she would leave i backed her practically on my knees to make her stay and she agreed i'm only doing this for mina i don't want her to miss any of her parents she said to me i don't care what the reason is as long as she's under my roof my life is weird. First, it gave me trauma. Then it healed it and gave the light of life. And then I ruined the heaven I got for myself. She's in her room right now. She lets me have our daughter. The punishment of my sins is that I should be kept away from this beautiful soul. But she didn't do that. I did so wrong, but still she showed how great she is. My princess will sleep till 4 a.m. now. I can get some work done in my office and wait. Wait till she comes back in my arms. She will. She will come home. I woke up in the middle of the night to an unusual silence. What's going on? I thought. Something is off. I rolled over and looked at the clock. 4.30 in the morning. It's early in the morning, maybe that's why I felt like that. I looked at the baby monitor and the crib was empty. I closed my eyes and opened again in case I was dreaming. My, my Mina? Where? I snapped up and ran out of the room, to her room. Her door was open. I ran to his room in case he took her in his room. His room was empty. I went down the stairs, almost tripping. I saw the kitchen lights on. I made my way to the kitchen. It was empty, but but there was blood on the countertop. I couldn't think, and I shouted, Gods! Gods! The gods marched in, their guns in their hands, fully alert, 
Any problem, ma'am? One of them asked, yeah. The door to my left opened there. He was with me now wrapped on his chest. I ran to him. I checked his shoulders, then turned him around, and then his face. Are you all right? And Mina? I asked on the verge of crying. Yeah, completely fine. She woke up, so I picked up, picked her up. What's going on? Why did you call the guards? He asked. I, I, I gulped. I woke up. I checked on her, but she was not in her crib. I came down to the kitchen. There was blood. I couldn't find you. My throat clogged. I tried to gulp down the ball of emotion, but I couldn't. Tears spilled in my eyes. Hey, he pulled me in a hug. Why in? He called and I sniffed. I, I thought I started but couldn't complete the sentence. Mina stared at me, her low lip cold, as she was about to cry, seeing me cry. I patted her back and kissed her fluffy cheek, but it was not enough for her. She raised her hands for me. He entangled her from himself and gave her to me. I soothed her and cooed, in, cooed her in my arms. She soon fell asleep in my arms. I lay her on the couch. Gently, I turned around to get myself some water and slammed into him. I don't know where he came from. I stepped to the right and he did the same. Then he stepped to the left and I did the same. I stepped to the right again and the same thing happened. His hands wrapped around my biceps and turned us around. Me in his place and him in my place. My stupid heart spiked up. I quickly went to the kitchen and gulped down a glass of water. My eyes went to the blood on the countertop. My insides churned. When I returned to the den, he was sitting by Mina with a first aid box in front of him. He was trying to wrap a bandage around his finger. I kneeled in front of him. I pushed my hair from my shoulder and helped him with the bandage. When I looked at him, he was staring at me and I stared back. I'd be too long. The longing, the desire, the agony, the love, the guilt. It was all mixed on his face. I'm sure if I stayed a beat too long, I would have jumped in his arms and he would have welcomed me. Get your together, wine. I already put Mina in her crib. Let's get some sleep. I have to go to get a few things from the ball for her yesterday or tomorrow. I lay down in the bed and closed my eyes. All of a sudden, my senses hiked up and a Woodsy scent reached my nose. My eyes sprang open. I looked around the room. That scent, I thought. I inhaled deeply and the scent went into my system with the air. I gasped mid-intake. He's... God. Suddenly my head goes to that part. His skin to mine, though it was just hands and fingers that I touched was still. My legs started feeling clammy. I... A second heartbeat developed down there. I gasped. It became harder and harder. I whimpered. I resist. I won't do that. I won't do that. Breathing heavily, I chanted. I won't. My morning was rough as I tried to find a comfortable position in my chair. A constant heart own accompanying me since the night. I adjusted my pants to alleviate the pressure, but... It did a little. The night was not enough that she wore the black dress with yellow flowers on it. A decent cleavage but when she bent down when picking Mina from her playmate, it was enough to make me burst like a teenager. It was quite a fight this morning, but I survived. I survived. Barely. A, a voice came from far corner of my head. Shut up, I tell the voice. I busied myself with work. She was going to go to the mall today with Mina. My heart felt a little weird. Something feels wrong. My phone rang and I picked it up. A wrong number. I have a bad feeling about it. Long time no see, June. A voice, an old voice croaked and then coughed. Who is this? No, Junko, don't do it, please. The clock is ticking, June. To be continued. 
so guys that's it for this video like and subscribe and also comment down below and also don't forget the bell icon so that you could get a notification of my every video and see you next time bye